Hi, I'm Rahul. Today I'm going to introduce our work Pythia, a customizable hardware prefetching framework using online reinforcement learning. This work has been done by researchers at Safari Research Group in ETH Zurich in collaboration with Intel Labs and TU Delft. Let's first dive into the executive summary of the work. Prefetching is a speculative technique that predicts addresses of future memory requests by associating memory access patterns with program context information which we call program feature. In this work, we identify three key shortcomings of prior prefetches that significantly limit their performance improvement. First, they predict mainly using a single program feature. Second, they lack inherent system awareness like memory bandwidth usage. And third, they lack in silicon customizability. To alleviate these challenges, the goal of our work is to design a prefetching framework that learns from multiple program features and inherent system level feedback information and can be customized in silicon to use different program features or to change prefetching objectives on the fly. Towards this, we propose Pythia, which formulates prefetching as a reinforcement learning problem. Pythia can take adaptive and autonomous prefetch decisions by learning using multiple program features and system level feedback information. Pythia can be customized in silicon for target workloads via simple configuration registers. Pythia also proposes a realistic and practical implementation of its RL algorithm in hardware. We extensively evaluate Pythia using a wide range of workloads and show that Pythia outperforms prior best performing prefetchers by 3.4%, 7.7% and 17% on average in single core, four core and bandwidth constraint core configurations. Pythia also provides up to 7.8% more performance across LIGRA graph processing workloads via simple customization. Pythia is completely open source and can be downloaded from our GitHub repository. This is the brief outline of my talk today. Let's start with the basics of prefetching and key shortcomings of prior prefetching. So prefetching is a speculative technique that predicts the addresses of long latency memory request and fetches the data before the program demands it. For prediction, a prefetcher typically associates program access pattern from past memory request with program context information, which we call a program feature. Some examples of program feature are program counter information, page number, page offset, cache line delta, or can be any combination of these attributes. In this work, we identify three key shortcomings of prior prefetches that significantly limit their performance improvement. First, they predict mainly using a single program feature. Second, they lack inherent system awareness. And third, they lack in silicon customizability. Now let's take a closer look at each of these key shortcomings. Due to the use of single program feature for prediction, a prefetcher typically provides good performance gain mainly on those workloads where the feature to pattern correlation dominantly exists. To illustrate this, we show performance improvement of two recently proposed prefetchers SPP and Bingo, each of which exploits two different types of program feature for prediction. As you can see, Bingo and SPP performs better than the other in two distinct classes of workloads due to their inherent choice of different program features for prediction. The key takeaway from this figure is that Relying on a single program feature essentially leaves a significant performance improvement on table. Instead, a prefetcher should learn from multiple program feature in order to provide a robust performance improvement across a wide range of workloads. The second key shortcoming is that almost all prior prefetcher have very little understanding of their undesirable effects on the system, which often leads to performance loss in resource constraint configurations. If we closely look at Bingo's performance in Ligra CC and Parsec Kennel, we can see that Bingo in Ligra CC has almost similar coverage to that in Parsec Kennel while having significantly lower over prediction. In spite of that, Bingo in Ligra CC underperforms even a no prefetching baseline. The key reason for this contrasting outcome is that Ligra CC, even without prefetching, consumes much higher main memory bandwidth as compared to Parsec Kennel. As a result, even a smaller amount of over prediction made by Bingo in Ligra CC has more detrimental impact to the overall performance as compared to Parsec Kennel. So the key takeaway from this figure is that prefetchers often lose their performance benefit due to the lack of inherent system awareness. Instead, a prefetcher should take its undesirable effects into consideration while making prefetch decisions. The third key shortcoming is that every prior prefetcher statically selects their program feature at design time and then create a rigid hardware that is designed specifically to exploit that feature. There is no way to change the program feature or to change prefetcher's objective in silicon. As a result, these prefetchers cannot adapt to a wide range of workload demands. 
If you want to exploit a new program feature, we essentially need to design a new prefecture from scratch, extensively verify and then finally fabricate it to the processor. And this cycle repeats for every new type of prefecture which significantly wastes human resource and time. So to elevate these challenges, the goal of our work is to design a prefetching framework that can learn to prefetch using multiple program features and inherent system level feedback information and can be easily customized in silicon to use different program feature or to change prefetcher's objective on the fly. Towards this, we propose Pythia that formulates prefetching as a reinforcement learning problem. Now let me briefly give a description of reinforcement learning followed by how Pythia formulates prefetching as a reinforcement learning problem. So reinforcement learning or RL in its simplest form is the algorithmic approach to learn to take an action in a given situation to maximize a numerical reward. Every RL system is composed of two key components, the agent and the environment. The agent senses the state of the environment at every discrete time step and takes an action. For every action, the agent receives a reward from the environment which it uses to reinforce its correlation between the state and the action. For every state action pair, the agent stores Q value that represents the expected return for taking that action in that given state. Now, Given a state, agent selects an action that provides the highest Q value. Pythia formula is prefetching as a reinforcement learning problem where the prefetcher itself acts as the RL agent whereas the processor and memory subsystem acts as its environment. From every new demand request, Pythia extracts a set of program feature which it uses as a state information to take a prefetch action. For every prefetch action, Pythia receives a reward from the memory subsystem that evaluates the usefulness of the prefetch request under various system level feedback information. Now let's concretely define the state, action and reward for Pythia. We define state as a k-dimensional vector of features where each feature is composed of at most two information, a control flow information and a data flow information. Some examples of control flow information can be PC, branch PC or last three PCs, whereas some examples of data flow information can be cache line address, physical page number, delta between two cache line addresses and many more. So here is an example of state information which is composed of two program features. PC plus delta is the first feature whereas the sequence of last four delta is the second feature. Now the first feature is further composed of control flow information PC and the data flow information cache line delta whereas the second feature is purely composed of data flow information which is sequence of last four deltas. Now let's define the action for Pythia. Given a demand access to address A, the action for Pythia is defined as to select the prefetch offset O. Pythia adds this prefetch offset to the demanded cache line address to get the prefetch cache line address. The action space contains 127 actions in the range of minus 63 to plus 63 for a machine with a traditionally sized 4KB page and 64 byte cache line. The upper and the lower limits of this action space ensures that the prefetches do not cross the physical page boundary. Note that a zero offset is also a valid action for Pythia which essentially means no prefetch is generated. We further prune the action space by automatic design space exploration as we mentioned in the paper. The reward defines the objective for Pythia that encapsulates two key metrics, the prefetch usefulness and the system level feedback information. Though Pythia can theoretically learn from any type of system level feedback information, in this work we demonstrate Pythia using memory bandwidth usage as an example of a system level feedback. We define reward in seven discrete reward levels mentioned as follows. Each of these reward levels corresponds to various usefulness of prefetch request. The inaccurate and the no prefetch reward levels are further categorized based on the memory bandwidth usage. The values of each of these reward levels are set at design time via automatic design space exploration. However, one can change these values via simple customization registers in silicon to provide a different prefetching objective to Pythia. Now let's take an example of reward configuration that encourages Pythia to generate accurate prefetch request while making bandwidth aware prefetch decisions. So these are the reward values used in our basic Pythia configuration. Pythia sets three key prefetching objectives based on these reward values. First, we provide much higher POC to Pythia for generating accurate prefetches. As a result, Pythia highly prefers to generate accurate prefetches whenever possible. Second, in low memory bandwidth usage situation, we provide slightly higher POC to Pythia for generating no prefetch rather than inaccurate prefetches. As a result, if the memory bandwidth usage is low, Pythia slightly prefers to generate no prefetch request rather than inaccurate prefetches. 
Third, in case of high memory bandwidth utilization, we provide much higher perk to Pythia for generating no prefetch rather than prefetching something inaccurately. As a result, if the memory usage is high, Pythia strongly prefers not to prefetch anything rather than prefetch something inaccurate. Now, if we customize these reward level values by increasing the reward values for no prefetching, whereas decreasing the reward for inaccurate prefetching, we provide a different prefetching objective to Pythia. In this case, we continue to give Pythia much more higher perk for generating accurate prefetches. As a result, Pythia still highly prefers to generate accurate prefetches whenever possible. But otherwise, we provide much higher perk to Pythia for generating no prefetch request rather than inaccurate prefetches, irrespective of the memory bandwidth usage. As a result, Pythia simply becomes conservative towards prefetching and prefers not to prefetch anything at all. We call this reward configuration a strict Pythia configuration which is particularly useful if we are repurposing Pythia for server class processors where each core enjoys a modest main memory bandwidth or in case of bandwidth sensitive workloads like graph analytics workloads where the performance improvement is sensitive to the bandwidth usage of the workload. We will revisit the strict Pythia configuration later in this talk to see its performance improvement across Ligra graph processing workloads. Now let me give you a brief overview of Pythia's design. So Pythia is composed of two key components, the queue value store, which records the queue values for all state action pairs, and an evaluation queue that maintains a FIFO queue of recently taken actions. For a demand request, Pythia looks up the evaluation queue using the demanded address and assigns a reward to the corresponding EQ entry. Next, Pythia extracts the state information from the demand request and uses it to look up the queue restore. For the given state information, Pythia finds the action with the maximum queue value and uses the action to generate the prefetch request. At the same time, Pythia inserts this prefetch action along with the state action pair in the evaluation queue. Pythia uses the reward stored in the evicted EQ entry to update the queue restore. Finally, for every prefetch fill, Pythia looks up the evaluation queue using the filled address and set the filled bit of the corresponding EQ entry. Now let's take a closer look at how Pythia makes a prefetch prediction. For every prefetch prediction, Pythia has to look up the QV store using the state vector information. For example, a vector of two program features, PC plus delta and sequence of last four deltas. For this given state vector information, Pythia has to look up the QV store and retrieve the Q value for every prefetch action. For example, prefetch offset 1, 2, 3 and many more to find the action that has the highest Q value. Pythia would use this action to generate one prefetch request. Thus, in order to make a fast prefetch prediction, Pythia requires a fast retrieval of Q values from QV store, which inherently requires an efficient storage organization of Q values inside the QV store. Now, a naive way to organize QV store can be a monolithic two-dimensional table, which is indexed by a state and the action values. However, the state speed increases exponentially with the number of state bits. As you can see, our example state information would require 67 bits to represent, which would inadvertently require an enormously sized monolithic table to store the Q values for all state action pairs. This monolithic organization not only increases the design complexity for QV store, but also increases the access latency. Thus, we partition the QV store into K vaults where each vault corresponds to one program feature and stores the queue values for a feature action pair. Now to retrieve the queue value of a state action pair for each action, we first query each vault in parallel with the feature and the action value. We retrieve the feature action queue value from each vault and then compute a max operation on all the feature action queue value to finally get the state action queue value. The maximum operation ensures that the state action queue value is driven by the constituent feature of the state that has the highest feature action queue value. We further partition each vault into multiple planes where each plane entry stores a partial queue value of a feature action pair. To retrieve the feature action queue value for each action, we first query each plane in parallel with the hashed feature value and the action value. We retrieve the partial feature queue values from each plane and then compute a sum of all partial feature action queue values to finally get the feature action queue value. The organization of vault into multiple planes enable two key advantages. 
First, it enables sharing of partial queue values between similar feature values, which significantly shortens the prefetcher training time. And second, it reduces the chances of sharing partial queue values across widely different feature values. We have many more detailed analysis of Pythia's design choice, including the pipeline search operation for QVStore, reward assignment and QVStore update, and automatic design space exploration in our paper. And we'll encourage everyone to read it. Now let's briefly analyze Pythia's evaluation matrix and key results. We evaluate Pythia using CHAMSIM trace-driven simulation across a wide range of single core memory intensive workload traces and homogeneous and heterogeneous multi-core trace mixes. We compare Pythia against five state-of-the-art prefetches. This is the basic Pythia configuration that we are going to evaluate, which is derived from the automatic design space exploration. Now let's first analyze Pythia's performance improvement in systems with varying core count. This is how prior prefetches performs in various system configurations with single core up to 12 core. As you can see, Pythia significantly outperforms all prior prefetches in every system configuration. In single core system, Pythia outperforms the next best performing prefetcher MLOB by 3.4%, whereas in 12 core system, Pythia outperforms MLOB by 7.7% on average. So we take two key takeaways from this figure. First, Pythia consistently provides highest performance improvement in all core configurations, and second, Pythia's performance gain increases with the increase in core count. Now let's analyze Pythia's performance improvement with varying DRAM bandwidth configuration. This is how prior prefetches perform in various DRAM bandwidth configuration. The baseline configuration is marked here in orange, whereas the other highlighted configuration roughly models per core main memory bandwidth in popular traditional processors. As you can see, Pythia significantly outperforms all prior prefetches in every DRAM bandwidth configuration. In the highest DRAM bandwidth configuration, Pythia outperforms MLOB by 3%, whereas in the lowest DRAM bandwidth configuration, Pythia outperforms MLOB by 17% on average. So we conclude that Pythia outperforms multiple prior best performing prefetches in a wide range of DRAM bandwidth configurations. Now let's analyze Pythia's performance improvement gains via customization. We will show an example of reward value customization where we'll revisit the strict Pythia configuration earlier from this talk. Recall that we constructed strict Pythia configuration by increasing the reward values for no prefetching and decreasing the rewards for inaccurate prefetching. In essence, we made strict Pythia more conservative towards generating prefetch requests rather than the basic Pythia configuration. We compare the basic Pythia configuration and strict Pythia configuration in LIGRA graph processing workloads and see that strict Pythia even outperforms basic Pythia by as much as 7.8% and 2% on average across all LIGRA graph processing workloads. So we conclude that Pythia can extract even higher performance benefit via simple customizations for targeted workloads without even changing the underlying hardware. All of Pythia's performance benefit comes in a modest cost of 25.5 KB of total metadata storage per core, which is invested only in simple tables. We also model a fully functionally accurate Pythia with full complexity in Chisel hardware descriptive language and show that Pythia has a modest 1% area over it, 0.4% performance over it, and while simultaneously satisfying the prediction latency of a desktop class 4 core Skylake processor. We have many more exciting results in the paper, including the performance comparison with unseen traces, comparison against multi-level prefetching schemes, understanding Pythia's learning strategy with a case study, and many more in our paper. And we'll invite everyone to read it. Pythia is open source and fully artifact evaluated. You can find all necessary source code along with all the traces used in our evaluation in our GitHub repository. I'll finally conclude my talk by reiterating that we identify three key shortcomings of prior prefetches in this work. First, they predict mainly using a single program feature. Second, they lack inherent system awareness like memory bandwidth usage. And third, they lack in silicon customizability. To alleviate these challenges, the goal of our work was to design a prefetching framework that learns from multiple program features and enhance system level feedback information and can be customized in silicon to use different program features or to change the prefetching objectives on the fly. Towards this, we propose Pythia that formulates prefetching as a reinforcement learning problem. 
We extensively evaluate Pythia using a wide range of workloads and show that Pythia outperforms multiple past state of the art prefetches in a wide range of system configuration. This concludes my talk. Thank you for listening and I'll be very happy to take any questions from the audience. Thank you.